What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today I've got a bunch of Destiny 2 related topics that I want to discuss with you all ranging from stuff that's happening right now live inside the game and a few days from now and of course the huge things we're getting in the Big Forsaken DLC which is just over a month away. I wanted to mention the Black Spindle or the Whisper of the Worm questline, a lot of confusion and questions I've seen about it and also things Bungie have actually said as well. Also some new exotic stuff and some catalysts which have some pretty strange way of being earned as well as some more updates from Bungie about how they're reducing the time to kill, changing mods, milestones early updates and a whole bunch more stuff so you guys know the deal lots of topics crammed into this one video hopefully you enjoy it and of course if you do want to support this channel you can do so by clicking the like button down below and let's get into it so there's been a lot of talk and questions about the black spindle quest of course the whisper missions on io which is a very strange set of events of course you need to wait for bungie to activate the mission itself then wait for the public event on io the black to spawn then do the mission and of course it's very time gated and very kind of limited in itself so for those wondering it is going to be a weekend thing it's simply going to be something that Bungie activates every Friday for the weekend, kind of like Xur, but it's going to be up for everyone to actually try. It's probably live as you're watching this video, and of course, Bungie is going to make it a regular thing for anyone to kind of hop on and try and get the weapon. Now, of course, one of the main problems is the event itself. You have to get the Blight to spawn, not the Cabal Drill, and it has to be in the Lost Oasis area, nowhere else. So that in itself is a problem because it's completely random which one you'll get. I've heard some ridiculous stories about getting the drill like 10 times in a row, probably more than that. And of course, it's the same worldwide. So everywhere in the world is the same for absolutely everyone, either the drill or the blight event so that is the way it works it is completely random there is no order or structure to it it is purely random whether it's going to be the drill or the blight and of course it's down to rng so as we saw it could be the drill a lot of times in a row so bungie said they did some investigating as to whether it was a bug and turns out it was no bug but the current random generator doesn't do a good enough job of preventing streaks of either event. They said, we're currently investigating ways to prevent these bad luck runs in the future. We did some simulations to see if there might be any more long streaks of one type of event in the forecast. We expect a few more outliers, but balanced with long streaks of only taken blight events. They did also drop a reminder this event will be happening every single week, so it's going to be available. And of course, once you do complete it once and defeat the boss, if you unlock the heroic version for the masterwork, the 400 version, that's going to stay unlocked through the weeks. So yeah, that is what Bungie have said so far about the Whisper of the Worm or the Black Spindle quest line. Comment down below if you've got the weapon yet, if you're going to be trying it this weekend. That is so far all the updates. So next up, I want to talk about some new exotic catalysts, some of the ones that ran into game recently with the latest update. A few of them are actually pretty strange and very different to the ones we normally have in game for most exotics. So the first one, for example, is the Telesto Exotic Fusion Rifle. This, of course, was introduced in the Osiris DLC, so it does drop from the Osiris DLC raid layer, the Eater of Worlds. When you get incredibly lucky and have the catalyst drop for you, instead of like every other weapon getting a bunch of kills or just kind of grinding lots of stuff to get the upgrade for it this one requires an actual exotic artifact this is literally the only item in all of destiny 2 that's classified as an artifact its actual type and its category in the game is an artifact so it's pretty strange they have that but the item itself is called the gift of the lighthouse so it says an artifact used to upgrade powerful weapons at your mercury forge the forging process consumes it so how you actually get this item is like i said very strange you simply need to have done all the forge weapons so obtain every single forge weapon from the Mercury Lighthouse. But once you have done them all, you can just go up to Vance, grab this item for free. It doesn't cost anything. You grab it, go to the forge, hold it down. It's going to give you the actual catalyst. And that's literally it done, completed. So as I said, it is a very strange catalyst in terms of the requirements for it. Most of them want you to go get like a thousand kills and grind a bunch of stuff. This one literally has you do something, which you've probably already done in itself is time consuming if you haven't. But that is what this exotic artifact is for to upgrade the Telesto. That's how you get the masterwork for it. Now, speaking of very time consuming catalyst, there is also another new one which is recently I did the sleeper simulant which is a very interesting one too this one is a lot more along the lines of what you would expect but it takes that and cranks it to level 100 so of course to get the catalyst itself in the first place to drop you need to do the spire of stars ray that's where it comes from the same in dlc where the sleeper is introduced but then the upgrade step is where things get a little bit crazy so this one wants to get a bunch of kills with the iclos weapons or pretty much weapon types it's very similar to the iclos hand cannon quest step just equip weapon of a similar type and it will count as well so for this catalyst upgrade is going to want you to get 1000 kills with a shotgun, 1,000 kills with a sniper rifle, which is quite a lot because of heavy weapons, obviously, and then also 2,000 kills with a submachine gun. Even after those 4,000 kills, though, you're still not done. It then wants to go get an item called the IOJYS data. How you get this is to do the Oracle puzzle section of the Black Spindle quest, so you have to wait for it to come up, then do the puzzle, open all the chest, then open the final chest to get this item to drop. And then, believe it or not, you're still not done. It's then going to want you to go get 500 kills with the sleeper simulator itself. So again, as a heavy weapon, not the easiest thing to do, but you can of course find ways to farm it so yeah 4500 kills with a lot of them being from heavy weapons and also an item obtained from a time gated puzzle inside a quest now the good news is that the third catalyst from the raid the legend of accurate one isn't ridiculous to get this one being a 
vanilla base game weapon is obtained from the Leviathan, but it simply wants to get 500 kills of weapon, so nothing too ridiculous, and there's literally a fraction of the sleeper. But there you go, I just wanted to point out some pretty strange things about a bunch of those new cast lists. They are very obscure to earn, and comment down below or tweet me if you have them yourself. So next up, we're going to look at a bunch of brand new Forsaken exotics and all their crazy perks attached to them. Firstly, we've got the two-tailed fox, which previously was called the twin rabbit. Of course, this one fires two rockets at the same time, one solo and one void. So it is the same Dito rocket launch we saw in the very first Forsaken trailer. Bungie just renamed it to the two-tailed fox. Next up, we have some very strange and very situational exotics. These are Titan boots called the Antaeus Wards. These actually let you bounce any projectile back your enemy when you're sliding. So very similar to the sword artifact, the Radagast one in Destiny 1. I think they'll definitely be a lot more helpful in PvE, maybe some kind of enemy type that kind of bounce a lot of projectiles. Again, bullets do not count as projectiles, by the way, only things like grenades or rockets. Can definitely see some montage moments, but it's a very strange exotic. We have the exotic bow we've seen quite a few times called the Trinity Ghoul. This I've used myself and shown in gameplay during E3 builds and stuff like that. I'm not sure if Bungie has changed the perk, but essentially getting a headshot with a normal bow, which is kinetic, will charge an arc one, and that's going to kind of chain electricity. We have a hunter chest piece called the Sixth Coyote. This one actually gives you two dodges, so that's actually really, really cool. I'm definitely going to use this in PvP. We have the long speculated thorn like hand cannon. This one, of course, is from Gambit, and its name is the Malfessence. What this one does is five hits, so just body hits, so it doesn't have to be kills or headshots. Any old hits are going to get you a massive explosion after five of them, kind of similar to the Polaris Lance. We have the Black Talon Sword, which we've seen before. This one could basically launch projectiles a bit like the Bolt Caster. Very cool sword. Probably the most interesting exotic is called the 1000 Voices. This is actually an exotic trace rifle. This one causes the beam where you basically point it to set things on fire and be explosive. So it sounds very cool. And of course, if you can tell, it's based off kind of Worm Gods and Ahamkara. Of course, Zol's name was the Will of a Thousands, and this thing's name is the 1000 Voices. So it's pretty related to him. Probably one of my favorite favorites is the chromatic fire this is a chess piece for the warlock and this thing literally gives firefly to every kinetic weapon so imagine midnight coup or better devils or namus midnight origin story any primary they're all going to have firefly with this chess piece being worn we have another exotic bow called the wish ender this thing literally lets you see through walls and basically wall hack for a short period of time when you aim down sight and then we can finally see the ace of spades which still does have the firefly perk it's still here as you can see but also a new perk which appears to be very similar to kill clip where getting kills after reloading grants extra damage bullets. I'm not sure if it'll be more powerful or last longer than Kill Clip, but that's basically what it does. There are also snippets of other exotics, but we don't know what they do just yet. But you can see the Hunter exotic bow arms. There's a shotgun with these hive runes all over it, some electric -y warlock boots, and also a hunter with his hand cannon. Then we can see the Cerberus plus one auto rifle, a different auto rifle, and then this shot, which is really interesting. The Titan's got some kind of chest piece, a bit similar to the helm of the most light, which is glowing. And also his helmet is the Prison of Elders helmet from Destiny 1. This, of course, is a very famous helmet from Destiny 1 with a big airplane wings it appears to be returning in this game as well so comment down below which of those is your favorite i personally am loving the look of the hunter chest piece with the double shade step and also the warlock chest piece with the firefly on every gun but those are a bunch of new exotics so moving on to some random topics that bungie's been announcing one of them is time to kill of course in the crucible we've had a few crucible developers say they're going to reduce it in different areas of social media but now officially have said a kind of statement about it there was some speculation on some recent forsaken gameplay and a lot of people noticing and pointing out the damage numbers are a bit higher in a lot of weapons. In a blog post they said, along with weapon slots and ammo availability, we have globally adjusted the time to kill in Crucible. If you'd like more details, join us on a stream they're doing on the 7th of August. So in this reveal stream, they're going to be showing off a full demonstration of new perks, weapons, armor, mods, loadouts, and stuff like that. Now, speaking of mods, they released some new info through Game Informer, some examples on which kind of perks we'll see. One of them is called Icarus Grip, which improves your weapon's accuracy while airborne. So pretty much the Icarus perk from Destiny 1. There's also Radar Tuner, which decreases the time it takes for your radar to return after you're done aiming your weapon so this i really like obviously in destiny 2 they heavily nerfed it and added a massive delay between aiming down sight and your radar coming back so this one is going to reduce that and there's also targeting adjuster which grants your weapon better target acquisition so pretty much hidden hand now some of those changes we're getting in forsaken are actually getting released a little bit early for us on the 28th of august you probably remember the taken king this happened as well so you got kind of early preview of stuff and this is going to be update 2.0.0 called preloading forsaken is actually going to introduce weapon slot changes so we can actually preview them and try them early all the weapons are going to move around and change slots also the milestones and challenge updates the director updates so is going to add the dreamy city and tangled shore 
we can't play them until the 4th. On top of that, the Heroic Story missions, Bulk Shade the Deletion, and 200 more Vault slots, so 500 total. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, a like rating down below is massively appreciated. If you want to make sure you stay up to date with my videos, then of course you can subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out. Of course, my Instagram and Twitter are linked down below in the description. If you want to follow me there, click this image on screen right now to watch another video from myself. But as always, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.